Hey guys, Compulsion84 here. Today I've got a video explaining what to look for in an AR-15 barrel in case you want to upgrade yours or just buy a new gun. This is part of my, uh, I'm doing an AR-15 video series that seems to be doing quite well. I'll link it above. There's a bunch of long and short videos about various feature features of an AR that should help both a new user and a more experienced person. So getting to the important stuff, you've got three primary factors. You've got the length of the barrel, which is obviously really important. <laughs> you've got the gas system length, which a lot of people don't think about. And then also you've got your twist rate of your barrel, which can affect what kind of projectiles you can use. A secondary thing you should think about when you're looking at a barrel is, what muzzle device are you going to use because that does affect the overall length of your gun. So I would think about that before you go to buy a barrel. And also you need to think about your round effectiveness or maybe lethality if you want to call it that because the 5.56 cartridge does have certain performance issues once you get below a certain uh, velocity or above a certain range. And if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, there are specialized chambers and there's also different material barrels if you really want to nitpick it. Um, I will mention that this video is focused primarily on the 5.56 millimeter or 223. Um, if you're using things like this blackout I have here, the rules for gas system, and things like that don't necessarily apply, but a lot of the other uh, recommendations and things should still help. So before you're gonna buy a barrel or an AR, you need to answer two really important questions. What's your intended use and what are your limitations? For your intended use, are you gonna be doing long range paper punching? Are you gonna be dealing with varmints in your property? Do you just need a fun range gun? Are you gonna be doing some sort of competition build for three gun or something like that? What are you going to be doing with it? What's most important? You need to make a decision or at least try to target maybe a couple of things. And then limitations. A couple of things that come to mind are weight, overall length, things like that. Decide what your parameters are before you go any further. AR builds are very, very different. For example, I've got a 16 inch one built for blackout and a 20 inch monster made for longer ranges. Now these guns are built on the same platform, but they're totally different. So when we're talking about the primary factors, let's do the first one on barrel length. So a longer barrel length will allow pressure to build up behind the bullet, so therefore it builds up a higher velocity, just with a longer barrel. Now as a trade-off, you obviously lose some mobility and it gets a little bit heavier, and then as it starts to get really long, it gets a little bit cumbersome. The most common length barrels for rifles are 14 and a half, 16, 18, and 20. 20 is what the AR-15 was originally designed with because it was this whole infantryman's rifle thing. I don't want to get into it. Read on Wikipedia if you want to know more. <laughs> but uh, one important caveat for this is uh, 16 is probably the most common barrel length. You will see a lot of people use a 14 and a half inch barrel. However, I personally think that's kind of a stupid idea because in the US you have to have a 16 inch barrel to meet federal guidelines. And if you don't, if you, for example, have a 14 and a half, you have to permanently affix a muzzle device on the end of it. You either have to pin and tack weld a muzzle device on the end of the gun or silver solder or silver braze above a thousand or it might be 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, which I did on one of my guns, to keep that 16 inch minimum requirement. Otherwise, it's a short barreled rifle and you'll get in a lot of trouble. So for those reasons, I don't recommend 14 and a half inch barrels. Also, with those shorter barrels, you are gonna lose some velocity even more. Uh, 16 is a, is a good starting point. Personally, I prefer 18. That's what I use on this gun, which is for three gun. It gets you a little bit more velocity, so you get a little bit further out. And then also, if you want to get into you know lethality concerns later, it, it uh, is more effective to a further distance. One other thing I'll mention before I forget, there are all sorts of different barrel profiles available, whether they be tapered, thinner, thicker, have different cutouts. I'll show a couple on screen. The thicker, heavier barrels are more resistant to heat and therefore will stay accurate longer or will have less variability as it gets hot. So if you want a super accurate rifle, you'll typically have a bigger barrel. So number two on the really important things on a barrel is the twist rate. That's often stamped right up here. And on some guns, it's shown like on the edge, similar to how you would on a normal rifle. Now as far as AR-15s and 5.56 go, the most common twist rates are one in seven, one in eight, and one in nine. And what that means is, over a seven, eight, or nine inch distance, your barrel twists. So, think, so just think of it as a more aggressive twist rate. So if you think of it, if you condense the twist rate, that allows your barrel to twist more before it leaves the barrel of the gun. Why would you want this? Well, heavier projectiles require more twisting 
to stabilize them. If you use a very loose twist, like they have some that are 1 in 10 or 1 in 11 for very light projectiles, if you use that with a heavy bullet, it's not going to be accurate. And in very extreme circumstances, they may start to uh, wobble a little bit or potentially keyhole if you have a really horrible combination. So while a shorter, more aggressive twist allows you to use heavier bullets, if you were to use light bullets, uh, typically under 55 grain, you have to be going pretty light, you could potentially have issues with a heavy twist. Uh, I would say 1 to 9 used to be the most common, however you are seeing a lot of ARs now that come in 1 to 7. Um, a nice developing market that's my personal favorite is a 1 in 8, which is what this is. Because a 1 in 8 will allow you to shoot pretty much anything common. Uh, I just jotted down some notes here. 1 in 7 allows heavier bullets up to 77 to 80 grains, which for an AR is, or which, which for 5.56 is huge. Uh, a little aggressive, blah blah blah. Uh, nine, 1 in 9 is 55 grains and below. You can use with certain heavier bullets. Some people said they use 62. That's pretty common with SS109. However, I, personally, I would not go above 62 grains with a 1 in 9. And then the 1 in 8 is kind of a you know an amalgamation, a jack of all trades. So you can use 62 easily. It goes up to 77 grains for some people. Um, personally, I'm never shooting. I don't think I've ever even shot 68. I've definitely never shot 77. But if I wanted to go heavier in a 1 in 8, I can comfortably go to 68. But for my normal 55 or the normal 62 a lot of people shoot, it'll easily handle those. So in my opinion, 1 in 8 is the best barrel twist rate. And like I said, a lot of companies are starting to embrace it. So I would say go for versatility and performance wise, I like to start 1 in 8. If you can't do that, 1 in 7. And then go 1 in 9. Now if you're going to be doing something extra accurate or anything like that, you might want to go with one of those very long twist rates with the lighter bullets, but that's kind of a specialized application. So the third thing that a lot of people neglect is the gas system length. And this is this is very important and it's a little, it's don't ignore it. It's a thing that really helps you. Shown on the bottom is a 16 inch 300 blackout carbine length gas system gun. And on the top is an 18 inch 556 gun with a rifle length gas system. This is a 18 inch barrel gun with a rifle length gas system. If the handguard looks long, it's because it is. I'm 6'2". That's my arm mostly upstretched. The handguard is long and the reason is, well not only because of controllability is, because my gas block is all the way out here. It's really far. And why would you do that? Well, remember how we were talking about earlier how further away from the uh, chamber of the gun you get higher velocity. Well, think about it. You're porting off the gas through a tube that goes into the action. When you port further out, you're getting a little bit higher of a pressure. So the engineers that design... My chamber wasn't fully closed. <laughs> So the mechanics of it is, is you're getting a, a, a higher pressure as you get further out. What's the result? You know, what do you, TLDR, what do you care about? So what it actually does is, is it makes it a bit softer shooting. This rifle length gas system, coupled with a little bit extra weight from the heavier barrel, makes this gun very easy to shoot. If you wonder why I'm all spun up about this, it's because I've seen a whole bunch of people buy 16 inch ARs and get a short carbine gas system on it which is just stupid. The handguard's short and stubby. You can barely hold the damn thing. You're holding it like this. It's, oh, it's just, it's so stupid. And then the thing doesn't handle as well. Um, some people have also said that you potentially get more reliability with a further out gas system. I can't personally confirm that without doing torture tests, but it definitely is easier to handle. So if you're gonna buy a 16 inch gun, get a mid-length gas system, you'll get a little bit more uh, surface to grab. You can put your arm a little bit further out. It's easier to handle. It's just all around. I can't think of any reason why you would ever get a short one other than saving a minuscule amount of weight. I, it's just dumb to me not to get mid-length gas system on a 16-inch gun. And like I said, if you do get a longer gas system, make sure you measure your handguard or your rail. Don't get a handguard or rail that doesn't cover it. It, it just looks kind of dumb, and depending how your gas block is affixed to your barrel, you could just even knock it off or spin it, or you know, cause some sort of problem. It's just, <laughs> just measure, um, check your specs, it's not a big deal. <laughs> hey guys, so I intended to keep this video under 10 minutes and I kind of got way more into the depth of the details and I actually recorded about 20 minutes of videos. Um, there's a lot here and I'm actually going to be splitting this into two separate videos. So the, the second video will cover muzzle device choice, uh, round lethality at range, barrel materials, and different chamber sizes. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to finish up 
uh, part two, I still have to finish editing it right now, I'm gonna put that up right after this video. So if you're seeing this in a month, it doesn't matter. If you're seeing this as it goes live, it'll be up in two weeks. So this is gonna be part of my, let's see, uh, AR-15 guide playlist to learn all about the AR-15. Ooh! <laughs> so if you know, if you have moderate knowledge, you might pick up a couple things. And if you just wanna learn about the platform and you're more of a beginner, it should really help you kinda of get the basics. I'm gonna keep expanding on this as I get ideas or suggestions. Excuse me. Feel free to leave uh, comments for suggestions or ideas, etc. below. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen me before, I'm Compulsion84, and I like to make videos about guns, gaming, and gadgets. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.